Well, uh, hello everyone. After that lovely visit to Mr and Mrs Marsh, who helped me out at the British restaurant, I'm really keen to show you some more recipes that you can make with your rations. Here's a really good supper dish for you to try at home. I'm going to start off with tomatoes. Now, I don't know about you, but with the unseasonable weather we've had this summer, my tomatoes are not doing very well at all. I haven't really got enough to use for cooking at the moment. They are coming and are ripening, but they're more in the quantity of a nice treat. Hopefully, in a couple of weeks, I will have more tomatoes than I know what to do with. So, for this recipe today, I'm showing you how to make it with tin tomatoes, which would be what you will obviously be using during the colder and the spring months when our fresh tomatoes are not available. Or you could of course use any bottled tomatoes from your surplus that you've got um, and have bottled instead of fresh ones too. But I've used the last of my points this month on a tin of tomatoes. And the first thing I've done is to slice those tomatoes up thinly, the tin tomatoes, and pop them in the bottom of an oven proof dish. Now, the next job I'm going to do is to reconstitute half a pint of household milk. Of course, it is available, ladies, at one tin per customer, and it is full of the usual goodness that you have in your fresh milk. It just doesn't contain any fat. It's dehydrated milk with the fat taken off. And that means that when you're warming it up, do keep an eye on it because it's liable to burn as it has no fat in it. You could always put a tiny little um, knife point of margarine into the reconstituted milk just to stop it burning when you're heating it up. Now to reconstitute half a pint I'm using two and a half level tablespoons and not forgetting to add the milk to the water, the powder to the liquid rather than the other way round. Make sure that your liquid is lukewarm, tepid, it's not stone cold and then simply mix in the powder to the liquid using a fork. I'm going to put that in a saucepan and I'm going to also add to that an ounce of semolina. Again, available on our points. So weigh out your ounce of semolina. If your scales are broken, it will be a heaped tablespoon. And then just sprinkle that onto the household milk. And I'm going to take it over to the fire and bring that up to the boil and stir it just until it's thickened. So let's go over and cook it. Now this month, of course, we found that rice is almost unobtainable. So semolina is a grand alternative to this in both hot and cold puddings and other dishes too. And the other good thing about semolina is a little goes a very long way. And you get an awful lot of semolina for your points. I've cooked that slowly till the semolina and milk has thickened. And I'm going to take that back to the table now 
and add some other ingredients. Now that will cool a little while I'm mixing up and making some other ingredients. Now the next job I'm going to do is to reconstitute one dried egg and of course ladies you do know about that now we've talked about it so many times one tablespoon of dried egg powder to two tablespoons of water and of course not cold water but lukewarm tepid room temperature water which will help the egg to dissolve without any nasty lumps and of course the handle of the spoon as the mixer pushing the powder against the side of the bowl a bit of bicarb if you've got rather lumpy a little bit of moisture from the air may have got in your egg container so always make sure you pop it in a good airtight tin a little bit of bicarb should help with really stubborn lumps so there's my one dried egg reconstituted i'm going to pop that by and the next job is to grate some cheese now i know this is quite a lot of cheese at three ounces and will have an impact on your week's ration especially that we've gone down to two ounces from the three ounces we had before june but it really is worth making and it's worth using if you really can't spare three you could always just try and get away with two but of course when you are using smaller amounts of cheese the best thing you can always add to a savoury recipe is a bit of mustard because it really does bring out the flavour of the cheese so to my semolina and dried milk mixture now I'm going to do just that and I'm going to add just a little of made mustard to the mixture probably about a quarter to a half a teaspoonful and some salt and pepper as well for flavouring mix that in and then I'm also going to add the reconstituted dried egg pop that in and half of the cheese that you've grated that's about one and a half ounces mix that together and it will make a nice cheesy sauce eggy saucy liquid and I'm also going to add when that's mixed through and the cheese should melt with the heat from the semolina and milk is a small teaspoon of baking powder pop that in at the end and this will help to make your recipe rise pop that in give it a stir and then we're going to pour that on top of your tomatoes in the base of the oven proof dish 
So, mix in and pour over the top. Trying to cover all of the juice where possible. And then the final addition is to sprinkle that last one and a half ounces of cheese onto the top. So that's the cheese on top again. And into the oven, a moderate hot oven for about 30 minutes until the dish is well risen and browned. So in it goes. Now whilst that's cooking I'm going to prepare some homegrown carrots and the outer leaves of my cabbage. Now that smells amazing. I'm really looking forward to my souffle supper this evening. Delicious. <laughs>